Welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this day. Today is the last day of the month of August. Uh, today is August 31st and it is Wednesday. So uh, I want to say good morning to all of you. Starting off with Mahalia singing Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And that was off of... Sorry. It was off of her album... Uh, Mahalia Jackson sings the best loved hymns of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So if you enjoyed that, I'm sure you can find it in other places too. Um, but it's good to start the day off with you. Today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 28. Uh, the very end, we're going to be looking at the last verse, verse 20. So Matthew 28, 20. Um, and our devotion today uh, is entitled listen for him or listen for God listen for God um, but let me say good morning to all of you sorry I'm hopping all over the place here we go um, good morning Barbara and Daniel thank you so much yesterday for that text um, that you shared with me yesterday Barbara and good morning, Daniel. It's good to have both of you here praying for you as we start the day. Good morning, Priscilla. I have my Priscilla mug today. Good morning, Priscilla and Gail. It's good to have both of you here praying for you at the start of the day. And Augusta and Donna, I'm glad you're here um, praying for both of you. Good morning, Michelle and Andrea. It's good to have both of you here 
holding you in prayer. And Vinette and Blanca, um, buenos dias uh, to all. It's good to have both of you here. And uh, Celia and Marilyn, I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer this day. Good morning, Janet and Genevieve. Welcome, praying for you as we start the day. And Cecilia and Ingrid, it's good to have both of you here too. Um, praying for you and for Betty, holding you in prayer as well at the start of this day. So, and I know there are others on the call, so I'm glad to be with all of you as we begin our day together. Today we're looking at Matthew 28, 20. So I invite you to open up your Bibles. I'm going to be reading um, from the message. Um, and just, I, I don't know, I think I may uh, give you 18 to 20. So Matthew 28, 18 to 20. But I'm going to be reading it from the message translation. So as you open up your Bibles, um, my name is... Uh, Cindy Stauffer. I serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick, and we are our um, church building is located on the corner of George and Liberty. That is where we gather to be in in worship and ministry and mission together. Um, so I'm glad you're here. I, I hope you can find us sometime and join us in the midst of our our ministry as well. So let's take a look. Um, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, from the Message Translation, Message Bible Translation, paraphrase actually, says this, Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you, go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. And this I want you to hold on to. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day right up to the end of the age. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. So our devotion today is entitled, Listen for God. And this comes from, and it's Beekner. I asked a colleague, I feel like I've never said it right. It's Frederick Beekner, Frederick Beekner. Um, so his book, Listening to Your Life. And today's um, devotion is entitled, Listen for Him. The question is not whether the things that happen to you are chance things or God things. The question is not whether the things that happen to you are chance things or God's things because, of course, they are both at once. There is no chance thing through which God cannot speak. Even the walk from the house to the garage that you have walked 10,000 times before, even the moments when you cannot believe there is a God who speaks at all anywhere, God speaks, I believe. And the words God speaks are incarnate in the flesh and blood of ourselves and of our own foot sore and sacred journeys. We cannot live our lives constantly looking back, listening back, lest we be turned to pillars of longing and regret. But to live without listening at all is to live deaf to the fullness of the music. Sometimes we avoid listening 
Sometimes we avoid listening for fear of what we may hear. And sometimes for fear that we may hear nothing at all but the empty rattle of our own feet on the pavement. But be not afeard, says Caliban from Shakespeare's The Tempest, nor is he the only one to say it. Be not afraid, says another, for lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world or the end of the age. God says he will be with us on our journeys. God says he has been with us since each of our journeys began. So listen for God. Listen to the sweet and bitter airs of your present, your present and your past for the sound of God. Be not afraid, for lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So, you are not alone. <laughs> that is our script. That is our, our devotion today. You are not alone. And that may seem like a very simplistic um, statement, but it, of course, is not. And when we say, um, because I think we like to separate out our lives between that which we consider sacred and that which we consider secular or our everyday, right? The world around us. We like to, to look at Oh, we go to church that is sacred. Um, and when we're walking to the garage, that's just a part of, you know, our everyday. But what if we could understand one of the things that I've, uh, I haven't really delved as far into this one book that, that I've been reading, but uh, our Native American brothers and sisters see the land on which we walk as holy and sacred and of course our scriptures do too but we tend to we tend to relegate it to areas so you know Moses was near the burning bush so he was near God therefore he was standing on holy ground holy ground but let's be honest we know and many uh, I think there was a one week recently or maybe at the beginning of the summer when we talked about holy ground with the kids and they said holy ground is everywhere um, the ground that we walk on to the garage, uh, and that time is holy because God is there. God is in the midst of all of our, our, our daily, um, uh, experiences. God is present in all things. And so we really need to stop separating out that which is holy and that which we deem, uh, that, you know, somehow God could not enter in. Um, because when we do that, we keep God away from the places that God, first of all, God is already there, but God wants us to know that God is dwelling in the midst of bringing, um, bringing something good through that. The other thing that we do when we relegate God to only certain places is that when we see people in the world that maybe aren't living in the way that we think is holy, that somehow we think God can't be there as well. And the truth is, God is, is the truth is that God is there. But in many ways, God wants to powerfully speak in and through those places. So whether it's somebody sleeping on the streets or somebody just going through a really tough time, um, making choices that maybe aren't the best choices. Um, but God is there as well. So how do we, how do, how do we, um, I, 
think it was yesterday I talked about, or maybe two days ago, talking talked about um, seeing God in 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 places that we normally wouldn't remember, or remembering thing times that we normally wouldn't remember. Um, how do we find those moments this day and remind ourselves that God is here as well? God is here as well. Um, so this is what I'm going to encourage you, even though we didn't use the Exodus scripture of Holy Ground, um, nor did we listen to music, but we did we did uh, hear just a closer walk. So if we're going to walk more closely with God this day, I want to encourage you periodically, maybe it's three times today, three is enough. Maybe, or I mean, if you do it more, great. But at least three times today, stop, look around, see where you're standing, and be reminded this is holy ground. Maybe it's the boardroom meeting where you where you where you feel like there's no way this could be holy ground. This is holy ground. I don't know what your days will will how they will unfold today, but my prayer is that throughout your day you will find moments to stop, be reminded of God's presence with you, and be reminded that where you are standing is holy ground. And that God wants to bring um, peace and grace and love and understanding in the midst of even those those um, most um, minor or or sometimes the darkest places that you think God can't possibly dwell. That God is there in the midst of that. So let us pray together. God of peace and understanding, God who dwells in the midst of the darkest places of our lives, God who walks with us through the storms, through the unknown, God who is in the boardroom and on the streets of our city, God who is present in our, our most bitter arguments with those that we love, God who is seeking to be known and bring healing to our most broken parts, God who dwells with us to the end of the age. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for being with us this day. Forgive us when we um, blindly believe you can't possibly dwell here in this place. Forgive us when we fail to see you or fail to look back and see what you have done. And lead us this day, Lord, that we might be aware that each place we stand is holy ground. We ask all of this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this day, where will you experience God's holy ground because my friends it is all around us God loves you and so do I I ask for prayers today as I travel um I will be tomorrow I will be on 
in Massachusetts on our, so we're starting up to Boston today to drop Mark back for his junior year. Ah! Um, so please be in prayer for safe travels on the road. And I will be uh, with you tomorrow from Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Um, hopefully everything will go well in the, in the, in the video, but I'm praying you have a wonderful day. God loves you, my friends. And so do I, and I will see you tomorrow from Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Bye friends.